hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is this is 4F Beauty and this is a short tutorial. I know, I know, just pick, pick yourself up off the floor now. There we go. <laughs> Should have warned you really before I said that. Um, this is the tutorial for the soft Sunday quick look that I put up uh, probably a couple of weekends ago now by the time this, this film actually goes up. Uh, but I had requests to film it, including doing the eyeliner on camera. Challenge accepted. So, using a single eyeshadow, which is this Colourpop Super Shock Shadow, difficult to say, in Bumblebee. They like their alliteration, don't they? Good Lord. <clears throat> in Bumblebee, I've achieved a very quick one and done, but still very effective makeup look that you can do if you're short on time or high on pain or a combination of both but still want to look halfway decent when you're out and about because we all know pain leaves me with dark circles and it's not good. So as I have said uh, for some time now and oft here echoed elsewhere on less imaginative channels. Uh, but they don't have Sammy the Sloth straw. Yes, I named my straw. Grab a drink. Sloth straw optional. Grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy this super quick, no foundation look. Here it comes. Hey, I'm back from the intro. Right, first things first, apologies if you hear next door banging because it seems they've got yet more building works going on. Um, I've been banging away like that all morning, <clears throat> but I'm behind on filming so I need to get a move on and uh, let's just hope you can still hear me over them. Right, I put this look up um, a, few week, a couple of weekends ago I think, probably by the time that I upload this, um, and called it my soft Sunday look, where basically we were popping up to see the mother-in-law to sit outside and socially distant in her garden. Um, Hubster and his bro and a couple of their mates wanted to go out on one of their long walks. They walked for seven hours. Yeah. Very fit husband. Very fit family, actually. Apart from me, he's falling apart. <laughs> anyway. Um... I'd flung a little bit of makeup on because I was looking like the wreck of the Hesperus because I'd not slept. Um, quite liked the look, chucked it up on Insta saying, if you want to see what this, if you want me to film this, let me know. And I had a lot of people saying, yes, please film it. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, this is still a teaching channel by virtue of which... I go at a speed that beginners can keep up with me. If that's too slow for you, there's a speed bridge out there somewhere. Feel free to use it. Um, I will be inserting my usual clip in just a moment where I talk you through the difference between hooded eyes and deep set eyes. Once that's done, I'll be back to show you um, how I create the look. While I'm normally zoomed right in, I will be zoomed right in initially, but then I'll come back out, show you what I do face-wise, 
and then zoom back in again for the end of it and then come back out again so a little bit different to usual um, but as always at the clip where I talk you through the differences I zoom right into my eyes so I'm gonna be all up in your face this does mean even if you're watching me on a reasonably small phone screen you can still see what's going on now right here's the clip I'll see you at the other end of it now um, my eyes have this primer on it this is the Cry and Pebble primer in blank page cotton I do have a discount code for this it is not affiliated I don't earn money from it but if you use my code you save I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them the reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour you don't have that trade-off with this you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour now she does six different shades of this at the moment white is the lightest the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black then there are three different skin tone shades as well so you should be able to find one that will work for you um, I apply this with a flat brush just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye now I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get I get transference of color onto the upper lid if I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter even with glitter glue I get a bare patch in the middle because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't so they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right so I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are with my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner you can't see a lot of it but you can see it so I haven't got hooded lids it's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus if I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap if you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. 
Hello. Right, as you can see, I haven't even primed my eyes yet today because I wanted to show you exactly the steps that I take. Um, if you're doing a no foundation look, it's really important to prep your skin well. So, uh, moisturised it, SPF'd it, and then put a little bit of this on. W7 Princess Potion, which is a complexion booster and primer. It's the equivalent of the Vasali uh, pink unicorn goop that people drip all over their face on Instagram. And I've let that dry completely, so my skin's not tacky at all. I then used a bit of this JCAT Eye Insurance on my under eyes because they were a little bit puffy. So, Crime Pebble Primer and my fluffy brush that I keep specifically for this primer. And because I'm not going to put eyeshadow all the way up, I only need to prime a bit of the lid I'm going to be working on. So that's my mobile lid and just above it so that when I open my eyes I can just about see the edge of that primer. If I'm doing the whole eye I put the primer on with a flat brush like this just got my hairs on it, fabulous and then blend over it with this to reduce the amount of um, primer on my eye. But in this case, because we're only using a little bit anyway, obviously this eye has the super deep creasing, so I do have to just stretch it out a little bit there. These are my new stick on ones, I decided to go, it's been, I've, I've had short nails short flat nails for quite a while the last few styles that I've done and uh, I decided I was missing my stilettos so the chances of me poking my eye out have just gone up exponentially because I'm not in the habit of having pointy nails at the moment could be interesting right medium sized fluffy brush it's clean it's just stained and a one and done eyeshadow. You can choose a matte shade or you can choose a shimmer. I've gone for this Colourpop Super Shock Shadow, which is quite difficult to say, in shade Bumblebee, which is this gorgeous orange that has almost like a like a gold mica in it. Okay. And although it's a cream, you can just and pick your pigment up. Okay. And I'm just going to run that along the, the lash line and then blend up using the usual circular movements. As ever, I'm at the end of the brush to put a little pressure on my lid as possible. And I'm doing my Viennese waltz. Of, I started off with the windscreen wiper along the lash line. But then I switched to my Viennese waltz. So natural turns towards the nose. Be a bit of a fleckle when we get there. And reverse turn when we come out. And all we're doing, gently moving that shadow up. And fading it out. Like so. So if I'm not in the mood to put on makeup but have to look halfway decent, this is the sort of thing that I do. I don't, I'm, I'm quite lucky with my skin, it's reasonably clear. I can usually get away without needing foundation. I can just use concealer and powder. But that comes down to your skincare. If you get your skincare sorted, then you should find that you too will be able to do this. Right. 
That was simple, wasn't it? Clean the brush on my microfiber cloth. She's still trying to find the end that still has a little bit of clean patch of microfiber on. There we go. And then today I'm not mucking about with coloured brows, I'm just grabbing my L'Oreal Brow Artiste in shade Cool Brunette. I'm using the spoolie just to flip my brows up a little bit. As you can see they don't go half as fluffy as they do when I soap brow them. But I didn't care, this is just a really quick, simple, soft Sunday look. Or soft no makeup look. And then just Again, I just do little upward strokes at the start, and then just follow the shape of my natural brow, just filling in any gaps. Doesn't worry me that I've smudged it a bit there because I'm about to go over it with some NYX Control Freak. This is the closest thing I've found to the Benefit 24 hour brow set. It's just a clear gel that you can brush through. Just to help soften the pencil. As you can see it's sorted out my little mistake that I made there. Or happy little accident as Bob Ross would call it. And also gives me more of that fluffy look that I get with my soap brow look. Next stage, you know I love the Revolution Renaissance Flick Liners. And I've got the brown one, it's so orange and brown. And as anybody who lived through the 70s knows, work really well together. Right, I'm going to zoom you out fractionally. No, that was in. Well done, boy. Just so that hopefully I stay on screen while I'm doing this. I've got a little mirror that I'm looking down into. I do have a separate um, wing liner tutorial. But basically I line across the top of my eye first. And then from the corner, draw out to where I want my flick to finish. And then Drawing it down to the main liner that we've just done. And fill it in. One wing liner. Challenge of the day, make this one match.
it is much easier to get closer to your lashes if you can close your eye. Obviously I can't this side because I'm blind in the eye that I'm doing at the moment. It's also much easier to draw the wing on. Because your lid is held slightly more firmly in place when you've got your eyebrows raised. A little bit of micellar water on a pad. get rid of that and just gently get rid of any fallout from the orange and then I'm gonna grab this is the elf hydrating camo concealer the satin finish in fair beige. Trust me when I tell you that really is all you need. I like to use a little, again, a fluffy brush that I keep specifically for. This was the Essence Eye Blender brush. I like to use this to blend. Buff it out at the bottom. Bring it up into that little dimple in the inside of your nose there that's always dark. Then bring it up under your lashes. side of your wing. Now don't worry about the fact it's a little bit light because when we put the powder over the top that will help considerably with it matching the rest of your skin tone. As I said, I do have a little mini tutorial on doing a uh, wing liner if you wanted to see something a little bit more in depth. Then I like to use this. This is the e.l.f. Under Eye Brightening Powder. And a separate fluffy brush that I keep, again, precisely for this. Before that liner crease, that concealer creases, I just dust over it with this powder. Powder itself is white, so it does give you a brightening effect. I haven't tried this on my Melanin Enriched Friends, so I don't know whether this will go translucent on their skin or whether it will go ashy. So I apologise for that, I can't, I can't advise you on that one. Right, zoom you back out a little bit, so you can see my face. Hello! Right, my loose powder of choice is Coty Airspun in translucent extra coverage. Um, not the easiest things to get in the UK. I actually order mine from Amazon and I make sure I order it from um, a seller who offers Amazon Prime because I believe where Amazon 
dispatch the Amazon Prime orders, they have to prove that what they're providing is a genuine article. So I tap some into the lid, get myself a big old fluffy brush like this. And then dust this all over. Yes, I go over the powder that I put under my eye because that helps blend it in with the rest of the face and I like to just bring mine down onto my double chinage because I do like to put a little bit of bronzer down here and I find that it does blend a bit easier if you have just powdered your face first. Now by using the translucent extra coverage it is exactly that, it does give you a little bit of extra coverage. It's not a, pay, a powder foundation by any stretch of the imagination but it does give you a bit of extra coverage. Right, going into my Butter bronzer in shade of bronze. Look at that pan. And this, I believe, is a blusher brush from Coastal Scents. And I do just under where my natural shadow is. I follow that because I don't tend to contour. I use my bronzer as contour because I'm quite cool toned anyway. And contours can go quite grey on me if I'm not careful. And then dust it up and around the edges of my hairline and then with what's left on the brush buff out that line clamp the brush between your fingers to make it flatter and I just do that is the extent of nose contouring that I do pick up a little bit more and then I just go Along the edge of my jawline there, tuck it up towards the ear at the back, and just down the centre there, just to help <clears throat> with the illusion of um, hiding the double chin. Oh, my brain did not want to go for that today, did it? Good Lord. Um, I have been going through <coughs> a stage where I am much preferring shimmery bronzers. So I'm going to grab my hourglass. This is the ambient ghost edit out. Looks like that. I like to blend all four together and I use this brush which is the Jeffrey Voldemorphy JS Why did you print it in white on pale pink? 20. So I just cross all four, tap off, start up at the top here so you don't end up looking like Coco the Clown and then blend a little bit on the nose, a little bit on your forehead where the sun will catch anything left just down the middle of the neck there <clears throat> and then I've got the Hourglass Euphoric Strobe Light Highlighter which is a little bit softer than the majority of my highlighters and just run that on the top of the cheekbone middle of the nose cupid's bow and my 
sticky out chin because why not? Grab my Revolution Cannabis Sativa Blowout Mascara. Zoom you back in. Oh, look at that grey hair, isn't that lovely? That's what I mean about the size of the brush on this now. I always warn you. I always do the top of the lashes first. So if they've got any powder on them. They don't show up quite. Gently, barely even kiss the bottom lashes. Because nine times out of ten when you blink you're going to be transferring mascara. From your top lashes to your bottom ones anyway. Anastasia Beverly Hills in shade Peachy. I like to smudge it out with my finger like that and just soften it. Right, I'm going to pause you while I sort my hair out and I'll be back. Okay, as you can see, lift it up in a top bun, just brought the sides and the fringe down. And there is your simple, soft, really quick, simple Sunday look. And that is probably one of the quickest tutorials you're ever going to see from me. So, for those of you who wanted to see this, I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you did, please give me a thumbs up, that would be awesome. Uh, double check, please, um, if you're one of my regulars, that you are still subscribed, because YouTube are still unsubscribing people. Very frustrating. If you've just discovered me, hi, hello, welcome. My tutorials are usually much longer than this, much more in-depth. You caught a quick one. So if you want to see some more of what I've done, there's plenty of other films you can catch up with. Uh, and once you've watched some of those, if you decide you'd like to join the 4F family, it's super easy to do. You hit the red subscribe button to turn it grey, you ring the bell, you say yes, and all notifications until YouTube stop putting up a pop-up window asking you the same damn question over and over again. And then hopefully they'll tell you at least one in four of my films that go up. But basically, pick a playlist, put your feet up, grab a drink, grab a snack, and indulge, my dears. Right. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.